Hey friends, welcome back to Anna Nail School English channel. Happy Valentine's month you all. So today's video is a nail design for Valentine's Day and before I start please subscribe, like, share, comment. This will help me grow my channel. So please do subscribe. And now let's begin with the video. I have already prepared my model's nails and today I am starting my video with the foam fitting. So uh, if you wanted to learn how to prep the nails, all my other videos on my channels have a detailed video on how to prep the nails. So today I am including how to fit the foam correctly uh, in this video. So what I am doing is I am prepping the foam. So basically I peeled off the sticker and then I attached the tips and then I uh, broke that tip and now I am measuring the tip. So whenever you are applying the foam, you have to measure. Uh, the foam uh, along with the corners or the growth points of your nails and then um, I uh, put a mark you can take a memory note or you can just mark it with a marker or I, what I do is I just use my scissor to just uh, gently put a notch around that corners and then I do a deep cut on both the corners so this way you can nicely round up the foam and fit it nice and uh, round uh, so the better you fit the foam your nail extension will also will look really nice so here I'm going to try a coffin shape today so I'm going to pinch and make the foam really tight and round around the uh, uh, free edge area now it's time for product application so I'm going to pick up a medium size so the nails are going to be a little longer so I will be taking a medium to large size bead and I always start from the free edge of the natural nail so I place the bead now I'm going to use my brush to like move it around so when you are building uh, nail extensions using uh, a foam so basically you are going to build the entire nail structure like, like uh, the length of the nail the shape of the nail everything you will be sculpting so uh, when you are using a tip to do a nail so you already have a predefined shape length and everything you are just adding the product on top of that already defined uh, what we call the nail tip but here you have a base to hold the product but uh, rest everything like the length the shape everything you are building with the product and your brush so that's why whenever you use a uh, nail foams to do nail it's called nail sculpt because basically you are sculpting the nails using uh, the product here so now we are building the free edge I'm extending the product uh, uh, towards the free edge so whatever length I want I keep on pulling the product towards the length I want so if you see in every form you will see the number so right now you can see my uh, product is almost reaching the number four so this these numbers are basically to uh, match the length of other nails so on when you start if you finish the nail on number four on the foam so you can keep that number four in your mind and you can do the exact same uh, you know number for all your fingers so all your nails will have uh, almost similar length um, or what we call extensions so later um, and the other thing always keep a little extra length so that when you're filing you can always cut down the length but if uh, if your nails are not long enough and if your client says i wanted a little bit more longer then you have to again put the foam and then reapply the product rather you keep a little extra then when you start filing and shaping you can cut down the length as per your client's requirement ha huh, still you will need to ask how much length the client wants and then accordingly you can you know lay the product so right now i have finished with my first bead and then i'm uh, i have started with the second bead so basically i blend both the beads together so when blending just make sure uh, you don't see a separate you know boundary between the two beads you have to, it has to be like really flawless lastly we are starting with the cuticle bead application uh, now cuticle bead application is a little challenging for most of the people um, the key to get a clean cuticle application is right consistency the size of the bead how you are placing it and how you are moving it with your brush so these are the few uh, things that you need to know when you are applying a cuticle bead and once you know how to apply a cuticle bead you are uh, extension work will automatically be flawless so cuticle um, application is very very important and right now what i'm doing is the, i'm just cleaning the corners because it was going a little too close to the skin so i just use my brush to clean around the corners uh, without making 
too much of a you know uh, too much pressure without putting too much pressure I gently cleaned it and now when i'm looking at it after sculpting the whole nails i see that uh, i need a little bit more thickness around the free edge area because it was since i pulled that length a little longer so the thickness was a little less so i took another bead and i put it with in the middle of the nail and i am going to build that little extra thickness so always whenever we do the first nail so maybe sometimes it uh, your your calculation will be a little off uh, so you can just fix it by adding more product so that's what i'm doing here so once i finish this then we can start filing and shaping so as you have seen in the beginning of the video um, i did the extension first and rest of the things were done after doing the filing shaping and everything so they <coughs> designs were done after doing the nails so i'm just going to sculpt the nails completely if you want to see more sculpting nails then please follow me on my instagram i keep uh, small clips of the extension work small small um, you know videos on extension forms filing shaping etc etc so you can find my instagram link in the uh, description box and if you wish to learn how to do extensions like a professional then you can reach out to me on instagram again uh, i take classes uh, one on one classes group classes workshops etc etc so you can reach out to me and then uh, we can work upon a class uh, whatever you want uh, i teach all types of extension even though i do mostly uh, acrylic but uh, if you wanted to learn uh, like gel poly gel uh soft gel tip extension or you wanted to learn electric file everything is uh, part of our course curriculum uh, so please let me know if you wish to enroll so now we have almost finished the uh, product application now let's move on to filing and shaping the acrylic is now completely dried so you open the foam like that and then pinch around the free edge area the foam will separate from the extensions and uh, then you can start filing and shaping For filing and shaping, I'm using a 100-180 grit, and I'm using the 180 grit side. So I always start from the corners or the side walls of the nail, uh, and then I start with the top side of it. So this is like a rough filing or the shaping of the edges of the nails first, and then we can start with the top side of the nail. So I'm just defining the shape. Uh, like I said, I'm going for a coffin shape here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm filing and doing a rough shaping. After doing that I started filing the top side of the nail so whenever I am filing on the top side I always start from one side I finish the whole side and then I go to the other side and complete the filing and after you are done filing just look from all the sides and then see if you know there is any uneven area or you need to adjust a little bit of height or width or whatever you want to you can check that and then fine tune your um, you know overall look and finish of your extension once i'm done with the hand, hard filing um, then i switch to a buffer or a soft file just to give it like a, a smooth finish so when you are using a hard file there will be like kind of scratch marks all over the extension and the buffer will even it out and then when you do the gel polish application it will have like a very smooth finish so this is the final finish after filing now it's the fun part let's start with the nail art design so i have decided to do multiple designs so i'm going to start with an ombre on the pinky and what i'm doing here is i applied a base coat and i then poured a little clear acrylic over the uh, base coat without curing it and then i send it for curing so the reason i'm doing this step is because i'm going to use gel polishes to do the ombre so as you know gel polishes are a little runny in terms of like consistency so if you have like a, a rough base it's easy to blend the colors together so i'm not going to use a sponge to do the blending i will be using an ombre brush to do the sponging i mean the blending so that's the reason i applied uh, that uh, you know clear acrylic base before i start with the ombre so for the ombre i'm using a pink and a lavender color so i started with the pink from the cuticle to almost the middle a little far from the middle and then i started applying the lavender color starting from the 
tip of the nail and then towards the uh, pink color that I have applied now if you see they both the colors are super close to each other and then I'm going to take my ombre brush and I'm going to start blending it so if you want a tutorial on how to do ombre using gel polishes do let me know in the comment section so I can make there are multiple techniques so I can combine it all together and put it in a single video so let me know if you wish to learn how to do ombre so that's here i am doing the ombre so i'm going to repeat this step one more time because with one single layer you will not have like good opacity uh, which means the color intensity so i'm going to do one more time so that i get a opaque finish or a uh, good uh, consistency or good color effect so i'm repeating the same step so this time i did not pour any powder um, this is on top of the previous uh, color i applied and the same colors i'm repeating and then again i'm going to blend it uh, with my ombre brush and then i'm going to create the ombre effect the, uh, i have decided to do the same thing on the thumb finger as well so actually i had to do a class because of that i had to rush a little bit because we are running out of time my model came a little late so i didn't get like a complete peaceful situation to finish the nail so i rushed a little bit so you can see here and there there is a little you know finish issues but overall it looked really good so um, now uh, before curing i also applied a clear base on the index finger because here we are going to do a 3d heart using both the uh, lavender and the pink color so for that i needed a clear uh, uh, what we call a no wipe top coat uh, on the base so that's what i'm doing here and once this is done the pinky and the index finger will uh, be cured together After curing the nails, I started applying dots on the index finger using a dotting tool. So this is one of the easiest way to create a hard design. So I added those two dots and then I used a liner brush to uh, form a heart shape here. So this is like I said, one of the easiest way to draw a heart on your nail. So this will have like perfect uh, heart shape. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm using the pink and the lavender color. Uh, both to do random hard designs on all over the nails i also added like tiny dots in between using both the colors um, and then what i did was i wanted to give it a 3d velvety effect so for that uh, after like finishing all the dots and the hearts i used clear acrylic uh, uh, to create that effect so uh, what I did was after doing all the dots and stuff then I did not cure it I picked up my clear acrylic and then I poured a uh, you know couple of uh, spoons of acrylic over the uh, uncured hearts and then I cured it okay so this will give us a 3d effect of for the uh, uh, hearts now next um, for the middle i added a pink base because i'm going to add some roses on this finger so i wanted a base color and then for the ring finger i decided to add a french tip and then i'm going to add a bunch of not bunch of like two roses on the french tip so uh, i'm using a longer liner brush uh, to create the french design so it was pretty straightforward um, so I did it and then send it all together for curing. Next let's create some roses. For that I am using a 3D carving gel or a dove gel. Uh, so this is what I am going to use. So this is a lighter uh, kind of a neon pink and I created small balls and then I uh, picked it up with a silicon tool and then I gently like created a flat uh, base uh, so I wanted to add like three four roses so I quickly placed three four uh, you know small uh, uh, rounds uh, or you can say gel balls and then I used that silicon tool to like gently like make it like a flat surface so it's not super thin when I say flat it's not like super thin it has a little thickness and uh, I think I added four, uh, uh, what we call four different roses, like random placement. You can place it however you want. Maybe you can just 
uh, get away with like one big rose also this is one of the easiest way to create a rose so after that i use the same silicon and i created like a rose like uh, shape using the same silicon so it's very easy you just have to move the silicon tool like this just basically you are creating a circle circle and then at the end you keep an opening so it forms like a rose so one of the easiest way to do a 3d rose so the same thing you can do with acrylic also but acrylic um, so there is a time limit so here since it's gel there is no time uh, limit you can like keep on doing if you spoil it then you can again just uh, pull it out and then make this a round again and then you can restart so after that i used gel polish to add a little bit of a stem i wanted to create the stem also with the same dough but when i was doing since i had to finish it before my class started so i rushed it and i like just finished it with the gel polishes uh, but if you are recreating this you can use the same green dough to uh, create the stems also so maybe next time when i do another design then i will add one of these uh, using the like total 3d but this is how i created the rose and i added the same two roses on the french nails as well because i wanted to give it a, a like a little edge to that french design so it was looking good as it is but i still wanted to go ahead and give like a little twist and that rose creating technique was like very satisfying so i couldn't control myself so i went ahead and added two roses again on uh, the french nail or the uh, or the ring finger again um, i added two leaves uh, which i could have done with the same dough uh, green dough but uh, like i said because of the time issue i had to like uh, rush it and finish it so i just ended up creating the leaves using the gel a uh, green gel um so that's how we did these designs and overall it looked so cute um so i think um that's how we did the 3d rose and again one more mistake i made i i was supposed to add a top coat which i forgot then i had to like uh, do some uh, temporary jugad as you say in hindi to uh, you know cover it up with the top coat so after top coating this is how our nails looks like so i'm going to add some close up so that you can see it so the index finger that's how the 3d hearts looks like then the roses this is how they look close up and then overall that's how our the entire set looks like i really liked it so let me know what you guys think if you want to see more such videos please subscribe to my channel and if you like this video like share comment all those good things and i'll see you soon on my next video until then stay safe stay happy thank you